we are live. Welcome to 2022's Not Okay Review and Thoughts. So, I this is one of those movies where I almost feel bad admitting... I mean, you're watching this video, so you... I really love this movie. It was... Yeah. And the, uh, let's see, yeah, this video will have at least some jokes, and I will get into serious topics as well. And this is one of those movies where if you don't already know what it's about, you know, if, uh, yeah, if you think the movie might be for you, you should probably know basically nothing going in. I think that is the the very best. If you haven't watched a trailer, maybe don't. And maybe, like, put this video of mine on hold until you've watched the movie. But if you either already watched, you know, or you just want to know a little bit more, you know, watch on. But, yeah, this is definitely... I knew a lot, but it didn't ruin my experience. Brief off-topic, make sure you watch the most recent Larry episode by Oral Knotts, Riff Tracks' ever-loving Swamp Thing, and Julie Noki's How They Come Up With Dreams. So, I realize this video is long, I'm gonna do what I can to make it worth your time. I start this video with a review with... It's most likely gonna have zero spoilers. If I spoil anything, I will verbally warn before I do so, and hold up an index finger while I'm spoiling, so you can mute and skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. And as soon as I end the review itself, please note the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers, including for the ending. And note that this video will contain politics. My main inspirations for this aspect are Going Rampant, The Take, Maven of the Eventide, and Turf Nation. And, let's see, right, while I am an ally, I am not myself part of the LGBTQ community, I wouldn't mind if I were, but I can't claim that I am, as such, I'm not trying to tell members of the community what to think or feel, I'm merely sharing my interpretation, and I know from experience with my fellow cishet, some only listen to cishet, not members of the community. And, yeah, so the movie is rated R, and so is this video. It's rated R for language throughout, drug use, and some sexual content. So, yeah, I might also swear in this video. Now, whether you love or hate this movie, I don't hate you, and I don't think that, you know, I don't think either group, you know, is only made up of people who hate those who disagree with them or have other values. If you express a viewpoint that, you know, goes against something I say in this video, the only thing I ask is that you keep it respectful, and I'll answer with respect. If you write something hateful, whether it's towards me or... Okay, if if you write something hateful towards the fictional char character Danny Sanders, I'm gonna let that one slide. But otherwise, yeah, if you write something hateful, I'm most likely just gonna ignore it. I can understand hating her. Let's see. But, you know, I, I don't think it's okay to harass people in real life who might be reminiscent of her. And, let's see. I copied in a lot of stuff that I wasn't ultimately going to need. Okay, so, yeah. I think this might be the first movie I've watched that's very much about social media, and if it is not clear from my weathered face, I am an elder millennial. Other than YouTube, I don't use social media. I used to Facebook a little. So, you know, there are things in this that I didn't completely get. I didn't recognize everyone on cameos, but, you know, as a YouTuber, I, of course, understand the whole external validation thing, and this is a good time to thank everyone watching, especially those of you who have subscribed, or hopefully will subscribe, over the course of watching this video. I don't really judge people who... 
for whom social media means more than is healthy because some of them just they don't really they haven't really experienced anything else so they can't you know like it seems normal if you haven't had any other experiences you know and i don't judge people who choose it although you know if I would implore you try to, you know, limit it to what's healthy, you know, what studies say is a healthy amount. But yeah, the... Right. Before I get further, I want to say there's definitely things in this movie that... I don't blame anyone who is deeply offended by. I personally have very See, I was going to say very thick skin, but to be fair, there are a number of things that offend me. So, what I will I'm I'm going to rephrase that. When you're trying to make an important point about something when you're exploring not mocking and not saying something is trivial i think it is okay to go very far uh, you know i've i've grown up on comedy that pushed you know pushed the line a lot and some of that comedy does now bother me but i maintain like you can you can say a lot without it bothering me as long as you're not like preaching hatred towards someone or calling for violence or something but yeah this is definitely like if you don't have very thick skin if you think something in this movie is going to bother you there's a pretty good chance uh, you know again it's in in uh, in communication you don't you know i already mentioned it's not like a super violent movie or something but there are ideas and viewpoints communicated in the movie that yeah they're they're you know yeah honestly i've been i've been going back and forth on trigger warnings in my recent videos i think this one really does deserve content warning and or trigger warning the movie gets into trauma, including from bullying, cyberbullying and such, grief and mourning, mass shooters, and terrorism. And, and some people consider it homophobic I'm not sure I see it but you know certainly if anyone feels that it's homophobic I'm not I'm not here to tell them that they're wrong for that now that brings us to the yes so this is my first viewing and uh, uh, I got done watching, you know, I guess 20 minutes ago or so. So it's very fresh in my mind. And let's see. Yeah, I think I'm going to... Yes, so the plot. An ambitious young woman working for online mag depravity, think BuzzFeed, Jezebel, Vice, something like that, finds followers and fame in an unexpected way. I'm gonna go with that, yes. So, let's see, the... Yeah, on IMDb, this is, you know, the more like this list mentions Honor Society, Purple Hearts. Ah, uh, let's see. I should have made clearer 
where a title ends and another begins. I'm just going to go ahead and look it up so I can directly, let's see. Here we go. And yes, Honor Society, Purple Hearts, Paradise Highway, The Summer I Turned Pretty, Don't Make Me Go, All Too Well, the short film, They Slash Them, Resurrection Blame, which is by the same writer-director, and she also starred in it. Maximum Truth, Miss Harris Goes to Paris. Yeah. And Buffaloed. And on Disney Plus, the suggested, you know, that I'm not 100% certain if everywhere in the world, if you want to watch something on Hulu, you have to go through Disney Plus. You do where I'm from, so... Yeah, but if, yeah, this is on Hulu and or Disney Plus. On Disney Plus, the suggested section links you to Fresh Mar Martha Marcy May Marlene, Gone Girl, Flight Plan, Night House, No Exit, Big Sky, and Dope Sick. I believe that's how the, yeah, so... I'm going to go into the writing now. Quinn Shepard is 27, so she's not, like, detached from the world that this is about. And as just a, a brief, I decided to copy in her mini bio from IMDb. Quinn Shepard is a writer, director, and actress based out of the New York area with a career spanning two decades. At age 15... Shepard began writing her debut feature, Blame, which came out in 2017, inspired by playing Abigail Williams in a New Jersey regional production of Arthur Miller's The Crucible. She went on to direct, produce, edit, and star in the film at age 20. It premiered at the 2017 Tribeca Film Festival, making Shepard the youngest female filmmaker ever to screen a feature there. Shepard is a 2018 Forbes 30 Under 30 list maker, and in 2019 received a Film Independent Spirit Award nomination for Best First Screenplay for Blame. And she actually, the, you know, she and co-star Nadia Alexander, who plays Harper, got engaged while filming this movie. They started dating after meeting on Blame. Now, yeah. So what I'm what I'm trying to get at here is she is she is extremely impressive, and it's a little bit frustrating that some people write her off as oh, you know, the only experience she's ever had is social media. Anyway, she has twelve TV credits as an actress, and let's see. And 11 movie credits as an actress. And let's see. One short actress credit. Three movie writing credits. For this, for Blame, and for the podcast series Day by Day. And she wrote the short Till Dark. This and Blame are so far the only directorial credits, but yeah, I've I think she has a long career ahead of her. This is she she has a better grasp on filmmaking than some people who are significantly older and have like a lot of experience and maybe gone for film school and such. This is tremendously impressive. And let's see. Yeah, she wrote the lyrics for some of the songs for Blame. And let's see. 
yeah. And the... Yeah, I'm going to quote a fellow critic here. The writing is so smart that you experience so many emotions throughout the film. You're laughing, then you're angry, then you're crying. This movie has a lot happening, and through all, throughout all of it, just remind yourself that it was written and directed by a young woman who wrote, directed, edited, and starred in Blame at the age of 20. So, yeah, this... She has tremendous emotional intelligence. Like, she writes... There are a lot of characters in this that have very different, distinct voices. Like, a number of them are, you know, millennials or Zoomers. But, like, you could... If I read just a few words of a, of a line of dialogue of any of these characters... And I didn't, you know, it wasn't attributed to one of the characters. And I didn't hear the voice of an actor saying it. I would most likely be able to identify which character would say that and would say it like that. You know, they're, they're all so distinct. And there's a very clear, like... Sometimes when, when a movie is written with a certain point of view, it will be very reductive towards, you know, some groups of people that they may be, you know, groups of people that they don't personally belong to, and that they've maybe had real-life negative experiences with. It's, it's very cathartic, and I speak from experience, to demonize a group that you've had negative experiences with in a piece of fiction, but it's not particularly interesting for the audience, unless it is just like if if you're just if it's just like a joke, a throwaway joke, you know, fine. But if you're making a big thing out of, it, and I swear I didn't personally, yeah, you know, it's it's fine. But just like you know, talk to someone about that. It's not that interesting for. Uh, yeah, and here she she really doesn't. I I don't quite know why some people felt like she did. Like, don't get me wrong. There are definitely some of the characters in this are not good people and reveal that they really they they have some issues. But and I I understand why some people have read judgment into that. I'm not sure I completely see it. Myself, I felt like she was, you know, all, all throughout. I felt like Quinn wants the viewer to understand all of the, yeah. And the, uh, yeah, story structure is, is quite good. The... Uh, yeah, I think I've pretty much said everything. It's just you know, she really understands the psychology of the of the people in the movie. And yeah, so moving on to direction and yeah, so as already mentioned, that is you know, once again it's it, Quinn Shepherd is uh, you know, and she yeah, there are characters in this movie who never stop checking their phone. And that's even, like, in situations where you'd really think this is, you know, they are going to... This is maybe not the right time for that. And... I am going to quote some fellow critics here. Once upon a time on a street corner in Bushwick, where, of course, the 
protagonist of Not Okay Lives, there was a manicured, recommissioned graffito that read, Everything is not okay. Even Bushwick centric Chiverches posed in front of it circa 2018 in promotion of their then new record, Love is Dead. This phrase, too, aligning with the fatalism of a millennium slash zillennial platitude like Everything is not okay, or as Quinn Shepard shortens it to, Not okay. This being the title of the second film she's written and directed since 2017's Blame, the latter two had its own psychological slant, but not okay turns psychology into satire, and that's as that's the only thing one really can do to cope with the sociopathy that's sure to get even worse in the U.S. and worldwide as time wears on. It may traffic some well-worn, tiresome ideas about cancel culture and social shaming, but the film ultimately works as a successful commentary on modern internet culture. <coughs> the film works mostly as a fascinating psychological study of attention-seeking. This person gave it a 3 out of 5. While Danny is certainly a caricature of a problematic, attention-seeking white woman, the film is a satire. And... Yeah, the movie's ingrained sense of humor and performances make it worth a look. It's gripping thanks to its performances and the familiar but still effective social media can be harmful message. And let's see, Danny's, to the movie's credit, Danny's shallow appetites are not without consequence. Not Okay is not afraid to take big swings and bold enough to not always chase after the easy likes. Deutsch, who is an actress of easygoing charm, manages to find something agonizingly relatable in Danny's addiction although she's also appropriately caustic in a way that rejects sympathy. Not everyone has thought so, but yeah, some people definitely. And... Yeah, and, and some people have thought that it's abhorrent the way it uses these traumatic events. And yeah, one critic made a negative comparison to Shattered Glass, which is also an excellent movie. I didn't even think to, yeah, I could have put that up there. I had, I just put up the you know, the three satire movies that I have on DVD. Now, let's see. Yes, it's poking fun at a chronically online generation, but it's also doing so in a clearly affectionate, well-researched way. I can tell from my back pain that I'm going to have to speed this up a little. So I am not going to give away whether the ending is happy or sad. I think... I, I personally think it's, it's really good, but I do understand the people who didn't think that it worked. Now, that brings us to the characters. So, Zoe Deutsch plays Danny Sanders, stars as Danny Sanders. I loved her in Zombieland 2, you know, been wanting to see more of her work. And she's so likable, both in that and in interviews, where she manages to sugarcoat the negative aspects to her characters in both that and this. I had to see a movie that would supposedly make me hate her. Like, in Zombieland 2... They actually trot out the dumb blonde stereotype, you know, the, the like that's a that's a trope so old that 
when I was in grade school, there were jokes about it, you know, and it's in a 2019 movie. A fairly major character is that stereotype, and for sure, it's also down to writing and direction and casting, but her performance really helps make it work. Like, it is unreal. How, like, I've only watched that movie once, and yeah, you know, by now, I guess it's like three years ago, I still remember a lot of the jokes that she made, and just, yeah. And, yeah, there were actually parts of this movie where I hated her. So that's, yeah, I I really, it's, it's, I, I honestly, I don't know that much about her image in general. These are the only two movies I've seen her in now, but, it, you know, that's going to change, obviously. The, you know, I think, I, I feel like I've heard that she plays someone kind of unlikable in at least some of the other ones, but just, I, I really admire, you know, that she actually has the guts to play such a, you know, yeah, hateable character as as in this. And I, I just, the moment I saw the trailer, I was like, I, yeah, I have to see that. I have to see if that actually, that's such, yeah, I really, I really like the core concept of this movie. I think it is, yes, but the, the, yeah, I, I, you know, like, she's a, she, she's in her 20s, if I recall, and, you know, she's, yeah, she's a young, attractive actress, you know, the, like, like the, you would understand if she only took roles that made her look really good, you know, yeah, she, she's from 1994, so, let's see, November 10th, so she hasn't had her birthday this year yet. Ah, crap. My brain is short-circuiting. Let's see. 27, I guess? Yeah. As one could easily understand if, like, the only movie role she would take is one where she's, like, glamorous and, like, you know... And, and to be fair, it is also, today, you can take roles, you know, she, she's not the only young actress to take roles like that, but I, yeah, I, I really, it is, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna speed run some critic quotes, and let's see... Yeah, some have said, you know, we don't have to like a character for a movie to be successful or for the character. Uh, we do have to see a complete character, and here Danny is just an idea. I wish I could disagree with that more than I, I do. That is somewhat true, yes. And, yeah, others say she stole everything she was in. And... Let's see. Yeah. Even before the plot of Not Okay really kicks in, Danny has been set up as a social media creature who doesn't understand the difference between tragedy and happiness. After all, both boost social followings, right? She's of an era where any definition that can be used in a social profile is a good thing. And it reminds me of, you know, again, I try not to judge too harshly because it is just... Yeah, some people just don't, they haven't really experienced anything else. But I remember a few years ago, there was this, you know, young person who, you know, took a selfie when they were at the, uh, I want to say it was one of their grandparents' funeral, and posted that online. And, you know, and it wasn't even like a super respectful one, you know. I just, yeah, you know, the, the, some, 
if you haven't really experienced anything else. You know, I, I, I haven't done that, but I have done things in my life where, like, you know, the way I grew up, it was it was considered okay, and then, you know, values have changed. You know, but both of my parents were in their forties when they had me, so they raised me based on values that were not current. So I've, I've, for a lot of my life, I've been a lot quieter than, the, you know, yeah, I was raised to not really speak up. And, you know, that's actually, that's part of why I make YouTube videos, to try to process that, you know, the, the, the fact that I didn't really have a voice for the first, I don't know, dozen years of my life, I guess. You know, I, I didn't really get to say what I thought if it wasn't what other people. So, so yeah, you know, I've, and I, I, I'm certain that some of the times where I was in a social setting and I was very quiet that some of the other people were really bothered by that but to me it was just normal so you know we'll try not to, yeah this is definitely a movie that at least some of the time really wants you to judge those people but yeah now let's see I think I will move on to Mia Isaac playing Rowan Aldrin. I have to see her in more because holy crap. Like she really like yeah, um this is a young woman with a long career ahead of her. She is, it's it's unreal how talented she is. I'm just very briefly gonna look up. It doesn't actually say her age on IMDb, but yeah, she. I've I've read others say that she was great in Don't Make Me Go. Which I don't think is on Disney Plus, unfortunately. Otherwise, I would watch it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a quick check because I got yeah, it's not. But um, yeah, I'm definitely gonna I'm definitely gonna watch other stuff that she's in. It she she really just the the what's the word? She's she's so. I'm gonna see. Mia Isaac doesn't have her own Wikipedia page, so that is also not somewhere that I can find her age. But yeah, I'm. Uh, yeah. So the the um, yeah, soulful and deep in conviction and and just. Yeah, I, um, when she speaks, you just, you, you can't help but pay close attention. Like, she is, she, she portrays a high school student. I'm not, sh you know, I, I can't quite tell if she actually is one still, or, um, she, she is, she is wise beyond her years. Her character is, and yeah, she's just just an absolute natural talent. I, yeah, and yeah, I'm I'm gonna quote a few critics here. She exudes maturity and strength. She's brilliant, and she's a magnetic figure. And 
She portrays the character in such an unrelenting realism that it will shake the audience to their core. Seeing a character who experienced... Uh, brought to life with such conviction, emotion, and passion just destroys every ounce of humanity in you. And, yeah. I, I keep going back and forth on whether or not... I don't think I want to give away in the review itself exactly who Rowan is. I'm just... I'm going to leave it at that because I really don't think that you should, like, yeah. And Dylan O'Brien plays Colin. I'm going to quote fellow critics here. A serial weed toker with hundreds of thousands of Instagram followers and a pig pinnish omnipresent cloud of vape smoke surrounding him. And let's see. Yeah. You can instantly tell O'Brien is having a blast in this role, and I'm absolutely here for it. And he speaks in a black scent, and yeah, it's... Uh, every single joke relating to him made me laugh. I, I, it was so funny. So Dylan O'Brien, for, for a different reason, although I hear he's, he's, of, of he gives a great performance elsewhere, but him I also am going to be checking out more work from. So he's in the Maze Run. I'm I'm seriously considering the Maze Runner movies because they're on Disney Plus, and I've heard some good things. Um, Cinema wins. Loves every movie he does, but he yeah he said a lot of positive things about them. But yeah, you know, I watched those videos and I was like, well, that does sound good. That uh, legitimately does, uh, yeah. I guess, I don't think, yeah, yeah. And he, Teen Wolf, huh. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, he he was incredibly funny in this, and yeah, and and apparently this is you know this is the second movie that he and Zoe Deutsch co-star in, and there was this interview where they're asked by like a Twitter, uh, yeah, Twitter submitted question if they're gonna do more movies, and without thinking he just jumps to yeah i mean we're not dying or anything and like you can see zoe deutsch like for, for she she takes just like a, a fraction of a second to just process he did really just say that moving on and no she was she was sweet but they're adorable together they are if if they make a romantic comedy together I think I will just have to watch it. I will have to find some way to watch it. There's this part in the in the interview. They're like they're sitting. You know, I, I, yeah. I, I watched a couple. One of them, they're in separate locations, but in at least one of them, they're sitting right next to each other, and he like just accidentally, ever so slightly, like nudges her with his elbow a little. And she, like, does a, a comedic overreaction and, you know, jokes that she's gonna, she's gonna knock him out or something like that. And just, yeah, they're, they're, they're absolutely adorable together. You know, I've, I've seen some interviews where a male and female co-star are not super comfortable and, yeah, here, here it really is just, yeah. And... Let's see, I, uh, let's see, yeah, uh, Danny works in a, in an office where there is a lot of uh, representation, like, different, you know, yeah, 
different voices can, can be heard in this magazine. Now, I'm just, yeah, the, the, sometimes I wonder if I should keep reading user reviews of, of movies, but, uh, so far I am, and every so often I feel like bringing one up, so here's that. The straight, non-drug addicted, wait, men and women are certainly minorities in the movie, as is the case in Silicon Valley and San Francisco today. I mean, it's not just about who, it, it's, it's not about whether there's literally, you know, are there more of them than the other groups. It's about who holds the power. And in the West, white men, straight white cis men still largely hold power. So, yeah, I, I don't know why people get so laser focused on that one particular thing. Oh, you know, oh, minority must be this. The filmmakers also had to accuse her of being a white woman who sees herself as the main character in her life. I just got done watching the movie. They... It's not impossible that there are multiple cuts, but the version I saw... She did not say in her life. She, the, the, another, you know, there's a character who says, you see yourself as the main character. There's kind of a difference there. But anyway, the, yeah, so the, yeah, the reviewer goes on to say, excuse me, this is exactly what the so-called undeserved groups are consistently making the point of. Has the concept of equality really gone that far off the cliff? I mean, the problem is, you know, they're, they're talking about people who take advantage of other people. The idea is, you know, to, to take care of yourself, to, to center your needs, but not abuse others in the process. You know, it's, we're not talking about, oh, you know, no white woman should ever, you know, take, take care of her own needs. Yeah, I, I... Anyway, moving on to so I already talked some about dialogue but it's also really well delivered and like just some characters in this movie really don't have very many lines but you get a real sense of who they are like I could easily tell the difference between the character that ah, I should have looked this up I I I'm going to go ahead and guess his name is pronounced Karan Sani. The, the character he plays in this and the character he plays in, in Deadpool 1 and 2. J yeah, like, even though he doesn't have a huge amount of, of dialogue or screen time, you, you get a real sense of, just, yeah. And that brings us to the cinematography. So, the the DP is Robbie Baumgartner, who has eleven uh, cinematog director of photography credits for movies, eight for TV, two for short, forty two camera department movie credits, five shorts. One documentary, and yeah, so I am not familiar with the other stuff that, yeah, but the, um, and anyway, yeah. Yeah. The um, yeah, I'm gonna quote a fellow credit here. It also doesn't hurt that Robert Baumgartner adds some major cinematic flair to the movie. Having worked on films like Argo, There Will Be Blood and Blind Spotting, among many others, his style kept me utterly enthralled. For example, one scene that I loved 
is a montage of Danny taking photos for her a fake trip to Paris, and the montage takes you through Photoshop, Instagram filters, everything. It's fascinating, and I wish we had more films that had this much style to them. I agree, and it really, like, underlines that it's not, like, I've met people who don't know very much about Photoshop. I've used Photoshop. It's not that easy. Like, it's not just, you know, click a couple of times. Like, some movies make it seem super easy, but... This is a movie that actually shows the, the, yeah, you know, she's, she puts in a lot of effort for, for the, yeah. Now, let's see. That brings us to the editing. Molly Goldstein edited this, and she has 17 movie editing credits in total. And 10 TV credits, 6 video credits, and yeah. I'm going to quote a fellow critic here. The editing, Monty Goldstein, is skilled as the story rolls through with laser focus. While the film is nearly two hours long, it never feels like it. The pacing feels right, and I get the feeling that Goldstein had a ton of fun editing the film based on the overall ugh, energy of the film. I, I guess that's how you say that. The word is U-G-H. The, the proclamation. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely agreed. The, the I was never for a second bored or any yeah and this was filmed in new york city and paris and let's see the yes so the the music was handled by pierre philippe cote and ha, I, I think I might have, yeah, I think, I think parts of that name I might have mispronounced. So apologies to 99% of Frenchmen and no apologies to my French teacher. And let's see. Yeah, so. Pierre Philippe has nine movie composing credits total, seven TV credits, and one for video. And just, yeah, he does a really incredible job. There are 33 and a half minutes of the soundtrack free here on YouTube. You know, I, I usually say, you know, only listen to it if you're also watching the movie, but, you know, if you're going to watch the movie anyway. But, yeah, it's, I could listen to this stuff completely independent of, of watching the movie. And, yeah, there's there's some original score, there's some licensed music, and the, the use of my blah, licensed music, holy crap, it is... There is, there is, it is immensely effective. I, I will not give examples in the review itself, but just, yeah. And the, let's see. So, yeah, about the pacing, I saw... So, so one user review said, started off really good and had me fully engaged, but after about 30 minutes, it got really boring, couldn't take any more, knocked it on the head at the 40 minute mark. So all I can say is I disagree. I, I wish, I, I wish people would stop writing boring without writing why, because there's a million reasons something can be boring. Certainly, I would say I, I never found boring the character interactions. I personally thought that the 
the plot moved very, you know, as, as fast as it should. Yeah, I, I have no idea what was boring about it. One user who said, although the pacing was decent, the 100 minute runtime could have used some tweaking to cut out at least 10 minutes. I'm not sure I would go that far. I, I don't personally think they needed to remove anything. The movie is an hour and 39 minutes long without end credits, and with end credits, it's an hour and 43 and a half minutes long. And uh, it's difficult to say. Yeah, I think if you know if you watch the first half hour, and it just doesn't really engage you, I'm not sure that it is. You know that that there's going to be a huge, like, uh, what's the what's the word that it's necessarily going to change majorly. I am going to very briefly see what was the 30 minute mark. If you. 33 minutes in, if you if you get to that part and no part of you wants to see more. I, I would say it's fine to at, at that point. You know, just the, yeah. I think at, at that point, if you still legitimately, yeah. Now, yeah, so the best element is the, it's, it's a tie between the, the satire with sometimes pitch black comedy and the the way that it handles the the message and the the relevancy of the message and i think the worst aspect is something i can't completely go into without spoiling so i guess what i will say is i am going to mention it at the very start of the it's yeah it's going to be one of the first things i go into in the second thoughts section now the according you know the worst thing according to others is that it doesn't add much to the conversation and they didn't think that it handled the various elements all that well I was most worried that it would come across as this really one-sided kind of just what's that word snipe, snipe fest and I didn't really feel like I, I the movie genuinely wants you to understand Danny and I really appreciated that so yeah the movie exceeded my expectations and without a doubt you know I was most looking forward to seeing Zoe Deutsch and she really she has great instincts and, and again I really I do not want to take anything away from writer director Quinn Shepard I, th I think the two of them together really understand how to approach this because it really is like you can understand Danny sometimes you I understand not everybody found themselves hating her and I'm not saying there's something wrong with that I felt myself, I found myself, uh, uh, what's the word, kind of vacillating between like, at, yeah, there were definitely times where I hated her, but there were also definitely times where I really empathized with her and sympathized with her. So yeah, the movie exceeded my expectations. I, I, I gotta see more stuff that, that she's in. Uh, just tremendous talent. Yeah. And that's also, like, the moment I saw the trailer and, like, I, I immediately said, oh, yeah, that's, you know, Zombieland, that's her. Zombieland 2, rather. Now, 
this is definitely a draining movie so you know don't just like put it on if, like if you're like exhausted from work and you just want to laugh do not put this movie on put you know there are there are so many things on Disney Plus and probably Hulu I it's, you know I don't know what's on Hulu that isn't yeah anyway there's there's tons of stuff that you could find that you can just laugh at do not put this on if you're not ready for it. You know, I knew, I knew be, going into this, I knew that it was going to be completely just crushing, like a real gut punch emotionally. I I would not want anyone to watch this not being ready for that. And to be, you know, the movie itself starts with a, I want to, yeah, what, what did they call it? A content warning, yes. A, a content warning that prepares you. You know, yeah. The trailers definitely give too much away, but they do also give you a good idea of what the movie's like. You know, I, I really found myself like, yeah. It, it, the movie was what I... You know, a, a lot of the movie was what I expected it to be based on the trailer. I have looked at the various covers and posters. None of them give too much away. And they, they're they good. You know, they're worth looking up. And, let's see. you know, they're, they're on IMDb. It's, they're not difficult to find if you don't, you know, just, you know, yeah, IMDb. There's a, there, you know, in the, in the right, yeah, when you're at the top of the page, to the right of the title and the, the video section, there's a section called photos, click that, then click poster, and there you go. Now, let's see. It's not a spoiler to say that Quinn Shepard herself makes an appearance in this. If I hadn't seen Interview, I wouldn't have known that was her. They don't make a big deal out of it. So, you know, make sure that you do go ahead and... Ah, what's the word? Yeah, just, yeah, again, just, you know, go to, actually, her IMDb photo doesn't look that much like what she does in this. It's, it's okay. I, uh, yeah, yeah, you just, you know, mem memorize her face in a non-creepy way, and just keep, keep it in mind, because her cameo is golden. Now, this, you know, I, I searched here on YouTube and found some clips, a couple of trailers, a, you know, uh, 15 review slash analysis videos. So, yeah, there's a, you know, I'm not the first person to, to, cover it but you know I, I don't know I guess I, I I have to admit I guess this is the first time I've covered a movie that is only on streaming so maybe that's just how it is that not as many people cover it as the ones that are in movie theaters but yeah I I think it deserves a lot of attention on Rotten Tomatoes it has 74% on the tomato meter based on 86 reviews 62% audience score based on over 100 ratings. The consensus, the critics' consensus is even if it may not add much to the discourse, not okay makes some salient points about online life with extra sparkle added by an effervescent Zoe Deutsch. And yeah, so the, the critics, the average rating was 6.40 out of 10. Only 22 
of the reviews were rotten and yeah it is fresh and the the 62 percent audience that that that's the percentage of users rated it 3.5 stars or higher and the average rating was 3.4 out of 5. And on a Metacritic, it has 5 user reviews, 24 critic reviews. The meta score is 62 out of 100. And the user score is 6.0 out of 10. And on IMDb, it has... Right, there, there are... If you know, if you hide the spoilers, there are only 88 user reviews. So I read them all. If you don't hide spoilers, it's 115. And yeah, so the the of the I guess this is of the 88. 13 gave it one out of 10. Six gave it two. Five gave it three. Nine gave it four. Nine gave it five. Fifteen gave it six. 17 gave it 7, 13 gave it 8, 7 gave it 9, and 6 gave it 10. So, yeah, this is roughly equally disliked and liked. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I guess more disliked than liked, really. But the, yeah. And 43 of the 49 links in the IMDb external reviews section were in English. So, yeah, the... the Overall rating is 6 out of 10, based on 5,556 MDB users. And yeah, so 24.3% gave it 6, 23.3, 7, 13 gave it 5, 11.5 gave it 8. 6.6 .6 gave it 10, 6 gave it 4, 5.7 gave it a 1, so, yeah. And there's th this isn't a very effects-heavy movie, but the ones that there are are quite good. And... I think this is a movie that does, you know, that, that really packs a punch considering that it doesn't like there's there's almost no on-screen violence in this and you know yeah uh, you know it's people talking about violence but it it really yeah and there is a lot of swearing but it's you know it doesn't detract from the it's it's somewhat like in a Tarantino movie it adds to the movie doesn't detract from it it, it doesn't feel like they think that swearing is automatically good, but a number of the characters in this just, because of their situation, they swear. It comes naturally to them, and yeah, it, it, I, I, if, if you at all have a choice, do not watch a version of this with censored language, because it's, yeah, it's going to take a lot out of it. I'm not a person who thinks that swearing is automatically good. You know, children shouldn't swear. Unless it's in a comedy or something, but... Yeah. I try not to cry during movies, since I appear on camera so soon after watching, and I believe it would be distracting to viewers It was if it was very clear that I had recently cried. This movie made it very hard not to cry. To be clear, there's absolutely nothing wrong with crying. I'm not saying I never cry, and, you know, if this movie or any other, or none at all, movie, game, TV show, etc., did or didn't make you cry, you shouldn't feel bad about it. Crying is healthy and normal. Now, the... Yeah, that... Yeah, so I think I already mentioned, but yeah, you can stream this... You know, this is on Hulu and or Disney Plus, depending on where you are in the world. So, I am going to give this eight unexpected consequences to wanting to be noticed out of ten. And this is a movie I could see myself watching in very soon. 
probably not today. I I need to like there's a lot it brings up some some heavy stuff. So, but next yeah, in a week I could see myself watching this again. And let's see. I think it it might also it's a movie that may be even more liked in the future because of some of the the stuff it goes into. Yeah, the, the I already mentioned. Yeah, because of the the pro gun control message, and that is it for the spoiler free stuff. So getting into spoilers, this is where we get into the thoughts section. So. Yeah, the rest of this video contains spoilers, including discussing the ending. The rest of this movie is not a review. It's a series of, well, thoughts, some of its analysis. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm... There, there aren't going to be very many jokes. It's mostly going to be analysis and stuff that got to me and such. And, yeah, the first section is thoughts I had while watching in chronological order. You can think of it as a running commentary, live tweeting, or the like. And the section after that is thoughts I had before watching. So, I'm just going to note the time code. Notes taken while watching. So yeah, that really is some awful social media vitriol against her, uh, calling her worse than Hitler, give, you know, sending rape threats and death threats. I really love the opening song. I thought just the... it, it just works perfectly with the yeah you know yeah the the i i think they that first scene in the office is really just absolutely nails it really gives you a sense of who danny is and the yeah and and the yeah you know danny is like i've just been having a difficult time what was it focusing on on my work lately and, and her boss is, says, and I've been having a difficult time ending this conversation. We're done. That's so cool. They can't hear you. How did you even hear her? I love it. Just like literally, you know, she's staying there, you know, talking as if, yeah, as if Colin could hear her. And like the, the, um, yeah, this this random person walks by, who who realized that that you know Danny wants to be talking to Colin, and then the just yeah, and Danny keeps calling the guy Kevin, and so she says, yeah, and he he corrects her. My name is Kelvin, and she says, no, I don't think so. Wow! Holy crap! And I feel bad for this fictional character because if you go to IMDb and you happen to look up the movie, his name is listed as Kevin. So whoever wrote, I mean, that's got to be an intentional joke, right? When it when he he says repeatedly that his name is Kelvin. He even spells out no, it's like it's like the the was a degree measurement thing, you know. Yeah. So I might be by. Oh honey, don't do that. Never ever like if you're not like yeah, just don't if you legitimately think that you are, you know, but, but don't as a, as a, that kind of, thing. yeah. And she says, ah, oh, you're, you're so lucky being minorities because you, you, you know, you can, you have things to, to socialize over or something like that. Just, yeah. And uh, I, I think, was it, was it Harper? One of them says, I hate straight people. You don't need my permission to hate us. What I will say is, I 100% understand what you mean for, for having to deal with Danny Sanders. 
and she takes three happy pills, not only one, so that's not great. And an unhoused person, person is pushed out of the way to make room for the sign for the coffee shop. And, you know, she, you see that she absolutely hates the interaction between Danny and Colin. Just, yeah. And Danny struggles with the scorpion joint. And he already forgot her name, even the hell, yeah. And the, the, I love the exaggerated laughing, as the subtitles put it. And the guinea pig walks onto the keyboard, but it helps her get the idea for Photoshop. See, cats, that's just... You, if you're just gonna, if you're gonna give us good ideas, then we're not gonna yell at you for walking across the, the laptop the keyboard. I'm just kidding. I don't have a cat anymore. I'm kidding. I've never had a cat. And we, we find out that the, the guinea pig is named Guinea Weasley. I was the if if I ask for some time off work, absolutely not. Amazing, thank you. Wow. Yeah, no wonder she was about to fire her. And she does at first try to come clean to her parents on the phone, but just and you know, she has to go to the the ah, what's it called? Ah, she goes to the the airport, you know, and pretends that she just got off the plane. And there's all this press there, and it's like, you really, like, like these, these reporters, like, these people just, they're, they're just trying to, to cope with this trauma, and you're sticking microphones in their faces and taking unsolicited pictures. Like, like, it's not... They don't have a choice. They have to exit through there. And you've got these people taking pictures. You know, you can't... Yeah, you know, what are you going to do? Just, you know, run up to someone and say, stop taking pictures. Just, yeah. That's only going to make things worse. And you shouldn't have to. And the, you know, her dad is crying at the airport and then you go home and he's still crying and he hands her some money. He just does not know how to help her in any other way. Like this is legitimately, he doesn't, he has very few words for her. You know, he does say that he's, you know, when, when her mother is like, I'm proud of you. Me too, peanut. And then, you know, he does give her a hug. Her mother doesn't even do that after, you know, when she's being hated. And, like, okay, fair enough. She did something awful. She's been doxxed. She's receiving death threats. I think a hug is in order. You know, my my parents used to have this, this plaque thing that said, love me. Ah, yeah. One second. I need to translate so that the meaning is not lost in translation. Show me that you love me when I deserve it the least, because that's when I need it the most. And, yeah. Let's see. And, yeah, you know, the parents actually do try to help. You know, the mother thinks up a lot of things, but it also does have this air of, like, she doesn't actually sit down and just talk to her. You know, she comes up with, oh, you, you need physical therapy. You need to go to a support group. And, you know, all these different things. You know, she's a, she's a manager. She's not as much of a mother as she's a manager. And, you know, that it's, it's great for, for, like, companies and such. They need managers, although those managers really need to treat their workers better, but right now Danny needs a mother, you know, and it, it, I've, I've seen others point out, it's pretty clear Danny's parents really weren't there for her when she was younger. They, they haven't been very affectionate. And that's part of the problem. I really love that her idea of Paris is right out of Team America. Like, just, you know, you've got a... Um, You've got a street musician, which we later see, oh, he's actually, she she pictured him because there's one in New York. You know, she's 
she pictures a mime and she, uh, she pictures that there's a French man and woman and the French woman slaps his face and then they embrace and kiss passionately and it's just like wow that yeah you know what was it that Matt and Trey said Team America it's like it's how you imagine these other countries if you've only ever been to Epcot and everyone at work loves her now she, you know and and the boss lets slip you know I was I can't believe I was almost going to fire you and Dane's like you're gonna fire me yeah and you know the the yeah, Danny, you know, sits with with all the with with a bunch of the employees, and the you know the, the let's see yeah yeah she says something like I you know I just I felt I felt like I I should get out of there, and so I I left and you know, and and one of them says that. Uh, I, I don't remember everything about the exchange, but one of them says, th you know, God is is how you knew, or something like that. And one of the others says, excuse me, this is a religion-free safe space, or so something along those lines, you know. And then the other one says, I didn't say which God, and, you know, it gets to be an argument, and or, or it's... It seems like it's going to start at not like a shouting match necessarily, but they're they're going to, you know, neither person is willing to give. It it seems like, and then she says, you know, ah, oh, my my ear sister ringing because for a second it wasn't about her, just the yeah. And let's see the the. I don't think that Quinn Shepard is against safe spaces, but I do think that she thinks that if you are, you know, like, if, if this was reality, if this actually happened exactly the way we saw it, then one of these people starts talking about, I don't like that you're talking, uh, that you're bringing religion into this. And, you know, person, I, I don't think anybody should be forced into religion. Uh, you, you know, you should be allowed to believe what you want or nothing at all. But yeah, the, you know, this guy brings, is like, I don't like you bringing up religion here. When they're literally talking to someone who survived a terrorist attack, you know, let's just... Could you maybe could you maybe table the religion thing until after the whole like it just yeah like you know hypothetically what if like I mean terrorism in France you know there's a, there's a strong possibility that it's motivated by religion so yeah bringing up you know bringing religion into it you know just yeah and I, I realized that the guy who took issue with it, you know he wasn't the one who brought religion into it but still just you know maybe maybe just like pull him aside afterwards and say I'd really appreciate it if next time you didn't but don't don't make it a thing as you're talking to the terrorist survivor you know terrorism survivor and now you know before she was trying to get you know to go on the I'm not using that word, so I'm just saying Q word, bowling mat, you know, bowling thing. And now she's not even going to answer. You know, she doesn't even, like, come up with an excuse. She just wants to go be with Colin. Let's see. And I quite like the lights blinking on and off in the subway. Very ominous. And, you know, at first I wasn't 100% certain what it was that was being said. The, the, you know, the low, the, the, uh, what's it called? The, the ghostly French voice, I think, was the, uh, you know, does it have, like, um, 
the the you know at first I couldn't quite tell but then it said all of them in you know in like one so it, yeah it's counting down from 10 from 10 to 0 like before the the attack and she goes to the support group and writes down loud noises on her phone since that was, you know, they talk about how that can be triggering and it's just, oh, please, it's just, yeah. And Charles experienced the bombing. He went to an Ariana Grande concert at his age, maybe as a teenage daughter. He does mention, oh, that's maybe so he can get a selfie with Rowan and his his online name is God is a woman man two ends in man I don't think there's something wrong with people outside of the the intended demographic liking the the music for example in this case of a specific artist and i i don't necessarily think that that you know quinn shepherd does either maybe i mean that's that's one of the things like here one of the jokes is that like he He went to an Ariana Grande concert, and now he needs a support group because there was a bombing there. And I understand why some people think that's really crossing the line. And I am... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I can't really... I, yeah. Yeah, that probably does cross a line. I, I can't really argue with that. And, right, um, for those who might not know, God is a Woman, I think, I think it's an Ariana Grande song, or album title, or something, I, I've just, I've heard that mentioned before, you know, and I do pay just the tiniest little bit attention to, to pop music. So, you know, and I think, I think actually, specifically, they did choose the, um, you know, that was the choice made because it's not, you know, ah, what's the word? It's something that you can, you can recognize even without being a, a fan of hers. Now, let's see. You know, personally, I don't really listen to, you know, it's not, it's not made for me. It's, you know, young women making pop music. It's, you know, often for young women. So, yeah, I am not going to. And, yeah, the, the. You know, Danny realizes that Rowan is a big deal for um, social media because Charles wants a selfie with her and claims it's for his teenage daughter. And I, I like the, the that thing where one of them says that everything changes colors. And just, yeah. You know, the, the, like, she really, if, Ro, if Rowan was real, she, she would be, like, a poet. Like, that is a, a really great, because it is, like, you know, everything seems different now that, yeah. And, yeah, and, and she has to go to a high school thing, you know, I, I think it was, like, practice for the the talent show and yeah Danny got Rowan's contact info and Danny really doesn't want coffee with Charles and just yeah 
the whole poem that I forget if this was the very first line, but it was one of the, you know, it, it really struck me. You can be two miles away and hear a gunshot. That that whole poem is amazing. Like she she really absolutely amo amazing poetry. And I, I realize, you know, it must be Quinn Shepard who wrote it, but yeah. Quinn Shepard is an excellent writer of poetry, evidently. Mia Isaac does an excellent job delivering it with passion. And we get to part five, Rowan. That's the first chapter heading that isn't about Danny, but it's not really because she cares about Rowan as a person, it's because she likes what she can get out of Rowan. And they go to the rage space, and we do see, like, Danny herself does clearly have some real, some some actual pain. You know, she's not just pretending. And yeah, you know the the um, Rowan says, you know, that's how she writes, as you know, getting getting the pain out like that. And Danny uses Rowan's words unattributed, but. Some of what she says, she's clearly speaking about her own pain. I thought they did a really great job. I, I guess I should. I thought Quinn Shepard did a really great job here. When, like, when when the the you can tell when Danny is co-opting something and when she's speaking from the heart. Like she, you know, she mentions being numb and feeling alone, and and you know these kinds of things. You know, that's clearly stuff she actually is dealing with. But then, you know, she goes on stage at the rally. And the, the you know, she starts talking. She says the amount of mass shootings there, there's been in America in that, you know, within that year or some, something like that. She she went to Wikipedia. You know, she doesn't actually care about mass shootings. She, you know, I think she was the one who suggested to Rowan, and Rowan just kind of accepted that they were going to do the, that the both would be on stage at the rally. And the, the, ah, what was the other thing? That, um, yeah, and then, you know, she makes it about herself. She talks about what I learned when I was in Paris and there was a terrorist attack. You know, it just, yeah, it's, it's, it's like she can't bear to not be the center of attention. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, and, you know, we see Rowan having to go through... It's just and and this is one hundred percent completely real. They they have these drills at some. I I don't know if it's all schools in America, but certainly some, where, you know the the everyone has to get under the table in the classroom they're in. Because that's what you know. Instead of actual gun control, instead of reforms. They just have these, like, yeah, and it's, and, and you see, like, the look on her face when, when the whistle blows, like, for a second, she, like, her, her lizard brain says, it's another mass shooting, you know, and, and then, like, within a, a few seconds, she, you know, she realized, and, and several of the other students can see from her reaction that they, you know, yeah. And Rowan reposts the article and congratulates Danny. And it, you know, she says at the end of the movie, like, I was so used to having other people use my words that I just repost. You know, she doesn't, like, confront her and say, 
you you should have asked me if you know if I could if you could use it's okay to not be okay you know and let's see yeah and and more group therapy and you know she actually it actually briefly becomes like they're they're congratulating her and she's soaking it in and Rowan shares that her sister Cora died in the shooting and you know that is why she does the activism the the you know she used to actually have stage fright so yeah it's and and that was also like i mean i i don't know that i was like the moment that she mentioned the sister i kind of thought oh she died in the attack but to the movie's credit it like i think it was within a minute or two of them mentioning the sister you know they they said that and and it still hit like it was still you know she died she was shot she was murdered and and yeah and harper talks to ah crap uh, danny harper talks to danny and asks her some questions and you know Danny offers up, oh, you know, I, I toured the Notre Dame, or, or I toured a cathedral, and Harper asks, which one? And she responds, Notre Dame. You know, that that one was partially destroyed years ago, so obviously, you know, but it's the only Paris cathedral she knows. And let's be honest, it's probably just because she watched The Hunchback of Notre Dame when she was younger you know that's that's the thing that like just yeah that was, yeah i think i saw at least one person say that the that harper was like a negative stereotype of a lesbian i mean again i don't i don't feel like i can really speak to this I, I realize, you know, early on, we're not really, we're supposed to see things more from Danny's point of view, and we're supposed to dislike the, the you know, the group of, of LGBTQ people who are going bowling, you know, but I didn't really feel like she was made to be actually unpleasant. I actually, I really like the scene where she confronts her because it really was like you know like Danny thinks that she can just pay her off and I was I I'm really glad that that didn't turn like that she didn't say you know I can she she said you can write you know either either I'll write it which will be great for my career or you can write it and you know I'm giving you until Monday to decide, you know, and, and it is this thing, like, she couldn't, she didn't have to, if, if, if Harper wanted to, she could easily have, uh, what's the word, she could have just written that article and published it on her own, and she could have even included the proof, uh, you know, but, yeah, she felt that it would be more right for Danny to be the one. No. Yeah, I, I personally didn't think that it, the movie ever made, you know, LGBTQ plus individuals look bad as a, yeah. Now, yeah, the, I, I, the, the dentist themed club party, I don't, Are those a real thing? Does that happen? Like, and and they made you know they made sure to put that in like trailer and such where she's standing there with the teeth whitener, and and they're taking pictures of the just yeah. Let's get a pic. That is what it's all about for you. 
and Colin actually tries to open up to her, but it only lasts seconds, less than a minute. You know, he actually said, you know, are are you okay? Because if you know, I I wanna I wanna be there for you. And then he starts, you know, then then he slips back into you know, because he is capable of that. He is, but it's not really rewarded on social media the the way that the the more you know yeah a lot of more negative stuff is rewarded on social media you know i, th I think you, you got to be careful not to there's some really great stuff on social media and some really terrible stuff on social media uh, you know i i don't think it's so much that you know some some people seem to think that oh we should just not have social media now, as a person who puts a lot of stuff on YouTube, please don't take away use. No, seriously. If if YouTube was, I I believe that YouTube is causing more good than harm. But the the you know BreadTube, for example. So so the yes the 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 problem is you know it's not that we should completely get rid of social media but there needs to be more regulation it needs to be more difficult to be terrible and more you know it is it, yeah the, we need to encourage the good and and purge the bad but yeah I really appreciate you know like Quinn Shepard examines this you know Colin and says no I, he might actually be capable of of feeling you know and then like the the after that you know when they go have sex in the bathroom like he you know he's he's getting off on the idea that she's damaged and he's going to be the protector you know and the flashing lights dance party. She sees the French people that she imagined. I, I really like that, you know, it, it works as this thing of like every so, you know, she can't quite push it away completely kind of thing. And some very unsatisfying sex. And she gets some plan B, takes it right in front of the store. And she, you know, she texted him several times, but he's already moved on to other girls. I like that it was shown that, like, she she checks his social media, and he's like done this other video or maybe live at the time, something like that, where he's yeah, he's got women right behind him, you know, talking about the yeah. So the the um, I appreciate that it didn't like cut to show him that it's it's her seeing it you know she's out there in the cold having just taken some plan b and yeah and it is also like she's she's kind of shocked you know she she utters the words did you just come in me and it is like like he really he has so little respect for her for women in general that it doesn't like yeah, it's, it's just, she, she appears to legitimately like him un until that happens, you know, then she loses all interest in him, obviously. You know, when she see, when she sees that he's already moved on to other girls, but before, like, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's wild. He, you know, like, clearly, she's not getting anything out of that sex. You know, and, like, in case someone's gonna, like, defend him and say, well, you know, if he can't last very long. Last I checked, he's got fingers, he's got a tongue, he's got a mouth. There are other things he can do that can make her feel real good if he legitimately can't last any longer than that and he sure as fuck can't come in her 
without any kind of like he doesn't even ask he doesn't even say oh I'm about to he just does it like it's it's wild and I really I appreciate that like you know I know some young men don't really understand why women don't like them I feel like Colin is a good like just if you watch that scene that's like that's a that's a good summation of Please don't do this. Not just for the girl's sake, for your own sake. You know, just, just don't, because because some guys are not going to care if it's only for her sake. But yeah, like, holy shit. That was, wow. And I really like that for the rest of the movie. Like, there are, Danny is a flawed person. She has character flaws all over but she is not going to give that motherfucker another chance. That's that's not a thing that's going to happen. Is is him getting yeah. That I I really really like the the you know like he keeps thinking she will and and like you know when they're in the office next and and she, like um what's the word? Um yeah, he he like he's like ah oh, you're playing hard to get, you know. I'll see you later. No, you won't. You know, she's like all the way down the hall, you know, but she's still not going to just let that one slide. Let's see. Right. I guess one of the thing, one of the reasons that some people felt like the there's homophobia in the movie is the, you know, Harper. I mean, I think it's just pretext. I think Quinn Shepard just needed some Ah, uh, what's the word? You know, she just needed some motivation there. You know, why is this person so? You know, why why does why does Harper investigate the story? You know, instead of accepting that this is a, an actual, you know, because because it's a lot. You know, it's it's pretty. Like you, you don't want to accuse someone of faking being a survivor of terrorism, you know. So, yeah, it's it's um, ah, what's the word? The this this thing of how the let's see, yeah, you know Harper like. Danny pushes Harper's buttons, not always intentionally, but some of the time intentionally, and, you know, bragging about the office and saying, oh, I don't have time for, you know, doing your thing. It's like, I don't know, I guess maybe it would have been, I saw someone saying that what it should have been was that the the colleagues get Danny really drunk and then she admits it. I think that would have been a, a good, uh, yeah. Rowan and Danny have great chemistry, and Rowan doesn't talk much about her sister. Danny does try to help. Danny compares them to Katniss and Rue. And Danny walks past the unhoused person, but then, you know, goes back a little, tries to help, and, you know, she. <laughs> She doesn't give her food. She doesn't give her money. She gives her the the dentist themed, you know, yeah, yeah, dentist stuff, you know. And the the woman, you know, checks it and's like, "What the fuck am I supposed to do with?" And smash cut. I'm a good person now. That is, yeah. And and again, like, that uh, probably crosses a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um. I hate I hate being the joke police. I hate saying when it's when it's well intended and clearly, you know, the joke here we're we're not supposed to laugh that there are unhoused people. We're supposed to laugh that there are people who, you know, who who just barely do anything to help them and then refer to themselves as good people. You know, because of the little bit they they helped. Now, 
Yeah, and, and Colin delivering some misogyny to Harper, and, and she just, like, you know, she, you're from Maine, Colin, and he speaks in his normal accent, it, you know, drops the black scent from once, and he's like, okay, we know information about each other, just, I, I, yeah, and, and the, the subtitles made sure to note, I th in normal accent, I think it, it is the yeah. I that that was that was really funny, and it's just like, um, Colin, you've got the wrong audience. Harper isn't loving the misogyny and the the just yeah. So yeah, an hour and seven and a half minutes in, and Harper is gonna look at the laptop. And Danny plays Avril Lavigne for, you know, she asked for the, the aux chord, auxiliary chord, yeah, and, you know, she sings along to Complicated, and, you know, you know to help her stage, to help Rowan stage fright, and, like, tries to get Rowan to sing along, and at first Rowan's like, I'm not, I'm not gonna do it, I'm not gonna, you know, this is silly, and when the, you know, the the um, ah what's it called when the when the chorus comes up you know Rowan does give in and, and sing along and it is like you know once again Avril Lavigne not exactly my you know but yeah it can be extremely like it feels good to sing along to to music you know so like if if anyone like, if you're watching this video right now, and you feel a little bad about, like, obviously if there are other people in the car, don't be, like, you know, be, be respectful to them. You know, don't, don't sing really loudly if they're trying to, you know, like, if they're, if they're, if they want a relatively quiet drive, you know. But if you're alone in the car or the shower and you just feel like singing, you know, yeah, I, I, I've I met a number of people who felt uncomfortable about it and like, I'm, I'm, no, I, I believe this is, yeah, some of the people, I, I told them you don't have to sing along but when we're listening to music you know again i'm not going to i'm not going to listen to something that you're going to hate listening to but when i put on some you know when one of us puts on some music that both of us like you know if if it's just the two of us i'm probably going to sing along and i will never make fun of you for for your singing so you don't have to sing along if you don't want to but, you know, if you do, you can, and it's, it's fine, you know, and yeah, several of them ended up singing along and clearly enjoying it. It feels good to sing, you know, but yeah, you know, Ron ends up singing along. It, it's a very sweet scene and it is like, it is very much like, you know, a young white woman trying to help other people kind of thing because because it's something she likes you know and then that's also yeah i'm maybe that's me being very white as well that i you know sing along but yeah and yeah the the rally and the the it danny you know Danny gives the, you know, starts to give the, the speech, and she uses Cora, Rowan's dead sister, and Rowan is clearly hurt. She told her that in confidence. It, you know, she wasn't trying to, and that's, yeah, that, that's, you know, no matter how much Danny can at times be sympathetic, she really has to stop treating other people's pain as a prop for her to get recognition 
you know, that's that's the big thing, and that's something she that's a mistake she keeps making in the movie. And, you know, some douches throw firecrackers, and Roan is deeply shocked, carried off, and cyberbullied. And, you know, Danny realizes that's what's going on and, and yells, No, 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 it's okay. You know, it's just firecrackers, but you know, it's it's too late. I, I like that that wasn't like a flashback or something that Danny realizes it at the time and then they just move on to the next scene because it is, you know, the damage has been done. Rowan is is completely, like, honestly, she looked like she was catatonic and, and just, yeah. And Danny starts to really feel bad and runs away from Linda, Rowan's mom, and the, yeah. And and also like you know she's uncomfortable, she's uncomfortable being in the room with Rowan now that, you know yeah because it th this is what it actually does. It's not there are there are consequences. You know she's been acting like there would be none. And. We see the, the vision again and the countdown in French. And, you know, she goes up and, and it's her own face in the coach. Really, really strong scene. Powerful. And, yeah, an hour and 20 minutes in. So with 19 minutes of movie left, she, you know, Harper tells Danny that she knows it's fake. And Danny writes an article admitting everything, but really struggles to contact Rowan and, and apologize. And the article admitting it is goes live an hour and 25 minutes. So there's really only 14 minutes of the, the shaming. And Rowan goes to the office, yells at her. And if I understand correctly, at first, you know, the, the, the boss comes in. And she's like, you have to go. And Danny at first perceives it as she's trying to send Rowan away. And and Danny says, no, no, no Rowan can stay. And and the, the boss makes it clear, no, Danny, you, you have to go. Get out of here. And Skeeter Davis, the end of the world, plays because, uh, you know, her social media shaming is is like the end of the world for her and she gets doxxed accosted by a traumatized vet and moves out very logically you know response to doxing and her parents are accused of being in on it her dad's getting death threats and and you know she ends up deleting her social media and going to an online shaming support group admitting you know she admits that her life used to be easy and Quinn Shepard, the movie's writer and director, spells out one of the messages of the film by appearing in it as herself. Like, if, if you go to the end credits, you know, whether... Yeah, you know, the... the um, IMDB or... Uh, let's see. I believe also on Wikipedia. Yeah, on Wikipedia it says... Quinn Shepard as herself on IMDb it says Quinn Shepard playing Quinn Shepard. Yeah, that's a I I like that I that is that is that is great. And you know one of them says you know maybe you should take accountability and and admit you know actually apologize to you know and. Yeah, Danny writes an apology. She's gonna go say it to Rowan, but Rowan delivers poetry to Danny. You know, so she's the thing she wants to say to Danny, but she doesn't know that Danny's in the audience. And Danny leaves, not talking to Rowan, because she realizes she shouldn't take attention away. You know, this is yeah. And that is it for this section so moving on to the final section notes taken before watching so yeah depending on what critic you listen to danny is anywhere between an innocent victim and a monster overly punished or not enough 
doesn't grow or grows a lot. So, yeah. So, yeah, the... Yeah, one quoting a critic, fellow critic here. This movie had me interested in what would happen throughout, but I feel like it shouldn't have opened with the scene it did. I would have felt more of the impact if it didn't just show how the movie was going to end up front. I definitely understand that perspective. I think... I don't know if it was always the plan to open it with the the reveal of all the negative attention she gets whether it was always the plan or a decision made later you know maybe even in editing i think they were worried that people would be very angry during a lot of the movie if they didn't know that eventually there would be consequences for her. And certainly, like, when you open a movie with someone comparing, you know, saying this this person is worse than Hitler, sending rape threats and death threats, and, like, um, ah, there was at least one, the doxing, did we, oh, wait, no, the doxing, was late in the movie. We did not know about the doxing at the start of the movie. But yeah, you know, and, and we see her there completely devastated, crying, saying, be careful what you fucking wish for. You know, that's a way to make it... Ah, what's the word? It means that when you watch her do awful things, and she does awful things, you realize that eventually there will be consequences. And that can help, kind of, yeah. I, ultimately, I think they did make the right decision, but I can understand thinking that it, it was, well, I mean, I'm also, to take it with a grain of salt, because I am someone who gets... I, I I love stories where I already know the ending. Not, not, not because I already know the ending, but I've... Uh, okay, this is going to sound really pretentious. So I'm going to start by... When I watch an adaptation of Shakespeare, I focus on the things that they change, because we know that the ending, most of the time, is going to be the same in every version of that same story. You know, I use Shakespeare because that's that's what I think of, you know, but yeah. Like the there are you know in the in the nineties and early two thousands I think they made a bunch of teen movies based on Shakespeare you know the Taming of the Shrew is ten things I becomes ten things I hate about you, Oth Othello becomes O oh, I think I haven't seen it I've just heard of it about it uh, you know ver various things like that and you can focus on the other things because the some some of the endings, you know. So yeah, I mean, I like that I can watch. You know, when it, when I okay before we knew what a monster he was, I could sit down and watch Mel Gibson's Hamlet, and I could watch Sir Lawrence Olivier's Hamlet, R.I.P. And yeah, I just I I like that. I like stories where it's not about what's going to happen in the ending it's it's about how you because because you know if you can still stomach the sight of mel gibson to this day the 1990 hamlet where he plays hamlet if you you know if you're someone who is willing to watch a movie from 1948 compare sir lawrence olivier's from 1948 to Mel Gibson's from 1990, and it just, it's, 
interesting because so many of the words are the same and there's there's so many things that are the same but there's a couple of things that are very different and I just I find that fascinating so I don't need to be surprised by the ending of something and I get you know why some people do yeah personally I'm I'm happy with it opening like that now let's see Yeah, so one user review said, what message are we supposed to take from this that white women aren't to be forgiven? I don't think it's that much about white women as rich shelter from sad realities people in general. It's just, you know, like, yeah. I think it's like Jimmy Carr says, if you make a mistake, if you are canceled, let people work out their, restra their frustration if you deserve to be cancelled. And let's see. You know, if if what you were going to say or do is as tone deaf as Danny is before her character growth, just don't do it. You know, better yourself first. It's in part trying to scare straight potential Danny Sanders, saying this could happen to you if you recognize yourself in her and here's how to do better. Now, let's see. So, yeah. This is where I get to. This is this is my one biggest problem with this movie. Danny struggles with depression, and this is something that we need to get a lot better as a society at recognizing and properly addressing. And it's sad to see how many professional critics miss the signs of depression and just said, oh, this is an awful person. You know, the things she does are awful. But it's because of a deep pain that she's unable to address in any other way. She thinks she'll be happy if she gets media, social media recognition. You know, the movie is not just a condemnation of young people addicted to external validation from social media and mass shootings and terrorism and such. It is also a condemnation of a failing mental health system in America, one of the wealthiest, most developed countries in the world, and unfortunately. I think an argument could be made that the movie itself doesn't appear to realize that. And I don't know, I mean, maybe Quinn Shepard could make a short film or even a sequel to address... Yeah, I, I don't know exactly. Because at the end of the day, like, her pain is real. She shouldn't have pretended that her pain had anything to do with terrorism. She shouldn't have, you know... It's a, it's a really you know yeah I'm I'm not going to I'm not going to try to put words to it because frankly Rowan does such a brilliant job of that in her final piece of of poetry you know so just yeah just go and and yeah if you have access to the film you know stream that part of the film now let's <clears throat> yeah, I mentioned earlier, you know, some people seem to j just think, well, you know, we... Like, I... I... I guess what I'll say is, I personally think that it's important to make movies like this, m movies exploring a life where social media basically, like, over the course of this movie, Danny cares more about what happens on social media than in real life. She doesn't actually sit down and really think about the people who died in the terrorist attacks in Paris. She doesn't think about the people who died in the mass shootings. She uses that to to for, you know to to increase her profile on social media. But 
you know, she's she's more sad when she's getting hatred on social media than when she finds out that there was a terrorist attack. You know, the terrorist attack in Paris at first is just an inconvenience to her. You know, that... I think it's important to make movies... Because there are people like that in real life. There are people... You know, earlier in this very video, I mentioned that there was this young person who took a selfie at their grandparents' funeral. And it's just... I, I, I legitimately don't think that that person meant harm. I don't think they meant to make light of it. But to them, that just... It seems... Honestly, I think there's some chance that that person, if they hadn't taken a selfie and posted it online, that they would have felt that they were being disrespectful to their, their grandparent, you know, it, so yeah, I, I, I think it's important not to just ignore these people or just hate them. We need to understand them. We, we have to get to a point where social media, you know, I, uh, I forget someone, someone recently Um, ah. Right, T1J, excellent YouTuber, made a video called Does Twitter Matter? Because Dave Chappelle said that Twitter is not a real place. And honestly, yeah, um, I recommend his video. I'm, I'm not gonna... I... I don't have as ah uh, what's it called he he puts it far better than than i could but but yeah i i do think it is important to make movies about it. and and i really don't i i don't know how you can watch this movie and not think that like it's 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 completely clear in this movie that Quinn Shepard and others working on it they they know that there's something you know sometimes there are really bad things on social media you know and and i i don't think that this is a movie i i would definitely say this is also a movie that realizes that sometimes good can come from it because rowan has a high profile which helps the the gun control activism you know, so it's not, yeah, it's not saying we should just get rid of it, you know. Like, by the end, Danny Sanders has to get rid of it because the, you know, what she did was wrong. You know, I, I feel like the movie, by the end of the movie, you know, it's it's been made clear there are good and bad things, there are good and bad aspects to social media. Rowan raising her profile is a good aspect. Her being cyberbullied is a bad aspect. Danny, you know, feeling like it's the only way she can be happy, that's a bad thing. She should be able to go, you know, meet people who actually, you know, who, who share some of her... Yeah, you know, people that she can relate to. She shouldn't be trying to... Yeah, that, you know, it, it was it was already wrong, but it obviously wasn't as wrong back when it was just she's pretending to be somewhere that she isn't. And it's I, I, I feel like I saw at least one other person point out, it's a very logical, like, you see, I want to say it's on Instagram all the time, once again, I, I don't use it much, but people will post pictures where they look great or where, you know, doing something looking great or, you know, take a picture of a place that they're apparently at and it looks great. And people will be, you know, jealous and downright sad, you know, because they feel like their life is nowhere near as good as this other person's. Well, this is you know, kind of the logical conclusion, not not the terrorist attack, 
but her straight up saying, no, 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 I was in this place that she, what, you know, she can't afford to go and her parents aren't going to, you know, so yeah. And, and then it takes a turn because that by itself is not quite interesting enough for a movie. Then it takes a turn. I agree that the way it uses, you know, terrorism and mass shootings is, uh, yeah, it's, it's in bad taste, but it is clearly trying to be a force for good. Now, let's see. So, one user review, this person gave it a 1 out of 10 and said, That girl Rowan was screaming all the time. Even her final speech was a big screaming show. I guess it just sounds like screaming if you refuse to consider her point of view. The rest of us try to listen to her. Like, you know, some of the time she's loud. That's a very natural reaction to trauma. Right, this, this user also said, you know, the final speech was a big screaming show. She addressed it to Danny, but that was weak because what she claimed Danny did, she did herself. I mean, the only thing I can think of is that he's saying, you know, both of them, you know, get, got big on social media because people thought they were survivors, but... Danny lied. There's a huge difference between what they did. Yeah, I, I get a distinct sense that this is one of the people who don't want to listen to pro-gun control messaging. Now, right, quoting a fellow critic here, the best part of the movie is the last third. When Danny is exposed for the fraud she is, when Danny attends a support group after having been exposed, someone asks Danny, have you tried making amends? Danny is startled, as this had never even occurred to her. Imagine that. And let's see. So yeah, the, the title has multiple meanings. On the surface, people worry she might not be okay because of the terrorist attack. What she did is not okay. It's ethically wrong. But she did it because she's not okay. You know, the the mental health issues, and I don't know if you know the it it brings up cancel culture, right? I I think an argument could be made that it does you know it does get across that some of the people a lot of the people who are supposedly canceled aren't actually canceled at all. You know, clearly the alt right try to cancel her, can't cancel Rowan, because they they call her weak. But then there at the end, you know, the talent show, she gives this you know really powerful speech, and everyone there applauds, and you know, she goes and hugs some of the you know her mother and and Charles, and just the the. Like, ultimately, we don't know, based on the ending, if she will still... Like, if... Uh, yeah. Uh, we don't know what her social media profile is like after, you know, all the... But... And, and certainly, I, I think there's a, a... You know, it was probably hurt by the fact that she aligned with Danny. But... I think the fact that she's able to give such a powerful, you know, deliver the poem so powerfully there, I, what I take away from that is that she's, she isn't knocked out. You know, maybe it will take a while to, to get past the, the, You know the the damage done, but she's not giving up, and the cause is not lost. Yeah, I th 
think that is what I had to say about that. Yeah. Right. Uh, to the people who say that the movie shouldn't be anti-gun, please pop your head out of the conservative media bubble for just a few seconds. Look at the stats of gun deaths for America compared to other countries. Now, in an interview, the director says that... Uh, lost my place. There we go. The, in an interview, the director says that the movie isn't only about social media, it's about the co-opting of trauma and how social media can amplify that. And she says that despite how bad Danny is, she can see some of herself in her, she just hopes she's more self-aware than Danny. And she acknowledges that it can be difficult to be completely unproblematic as a white woman on the internet. And... Yeah, so basically, you know, Rowan should be the main character. She's the more interesting and ethical one. She's the one who really needs to be heard. But the movie, very intentionally, starts out with Danny as the protagonist because she's the type of person who makes everything about her. And it also allows the filmmakers to sneak in the, the pro-gun control message, hopefully reaching people who otherwise wouldn't be open to it. And yeah, you know, I, I thought it was tremendously clever and I like if Quinn Shepard at some point wants to just make a movie where from the start Rowan or someone like her is the protagonist I'll watch that but I do think that this is you know yeah this is a way to get to yeah sneak in that that message and I all I mean it almost feels like I don't think that this was ever... Uh, I, I get the sense that Quinn Shepard always wanted to talk about trauma, real trauma, not just people who pretend, you know, and, and it is, like, there are people who have claimed that something awful happened to them, and later it was revealed that the, uh, you know, that they were lying. So... I, in my opinion, this in it is my belief, personal belief, that this movie always started out as Quinn Shepard wanting to talk about, you know, gun control, but it feels like the movie starts out being about Danny and her just trying, you know, I, I mean, at the start of the movie, like she, you know, at at the start she's like. It's, it's her boss that says FOMO over 9-11, but yeah, you know, Danny doesn't disagree. That's she, she didn't put it like that, but that's what she's expressing, you know, and for a while it seems like it's just going to be about her, you know, struggling to, to climb social media ladder, but then, like gradually the movie becomes more and more about Rowan and more and more about actual trauma, you know, and yeah, I, I, I feel like it's almost like, I mean, that is, I, I mean, I, I, I'm aware that there are people out there who don't care about gun control, but it just, I feel like it's today. It's difficult to, to, you know, but we have to keep fighting. We have to keep fighting until more gun control is passed and not the crumbs that occasionally get, you know, I, f I feel like today, yeah, you know, no matter what you're thinking about, no matter what you're trying to do, like, massacres mass shootings come up you know it's it's something that and i i feel like the, the movie does a really great job of communicating to the audience that it is actually difficult to completely avoid you know it, it ends up going there and i've i've seen some people say that they thought that the the funny parts of the movie and the the 
the the the message part of the movie didn't mix well i'm not sure i would say that they mix well but i was never i i'm not unhappy that it like a I guess I could just very briefly sum up. Basically, my biggest problem is that it kind of... It really doesn't take Danny's mental health issues seriously at all. So that's that's the biggest one. Then the it, it's at times disrespectful in how it uses terrorist attacks and mass shootings. I think... Yeah, those are those are really the main yeah, you know. But the the yeah, I I'm I wouldn't say that they mix, but I didn't really like I I never felt like they should mix, if that makes sense. I I felt it it you know, first of all, it worked. When the movie wanted me to laugh, I laughed when it wanted me to cringe. I cringed, and when it wanted me to care, I cared. Uh, you know, and and yeah, the the um, what's the word? They didn't mix, but I think that was the right choice. I don't, I because yeah, you know, if you look back there, there are you know, Matt and Trey, and Mel Brooks can make you laugh and care at the same time but i don't i think this was the right choice for this movie now i think uh, i feel like there was something that i wanted to say now I'll, i i'm pretty sure i I've, I've uh i think i did get absolutely everything so yeah this is the end of the video, so please go to the comments. Let me know, you know, what is your favorite movie like this? What was your favorite part of this movie? Do you think it worked or do you think it didn't work? Why, why not? Yeah. Um, oh, right. Just real quick. Uh, I kept forgetting to put in the document. I am aware that I'm going to, I think it's called, yeah, actually, come to think of it, I'm not even entirely sure. Right. I am aware that Dear Evan Hansen is also, like, there are some, um... You know that also had some some themes that this you know went into. I've I've seen people compare the honestly basically the only thing I know about Dear Evan Hansen is that Jenny Nicholson spent seventy seven minutes. You know she even in she named the video a needlessly thorough roast of Dear Evan Hansen. So. I, I can't make any comparisons. You know, I, a, a lot of I've heard a lot of people hate that movie, so I I honestly have uh, movie yeah movie musical yeah. Now, if you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page. One two more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one one vlog per week, reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie. And recently, the review and thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if you want more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog as well as catch my video next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording. I'll catch you next time.